Reba, just uh, on the, the COVID situation in South Africa at the moment, uh, do you expect changes to the format of the URC now, considering the developing COVID situation there? For example, do you think the South African teams could be pulled from the competition? <laughs> well, uh, to, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, you know, what, we, we can't predict much what will happen in the further months. So I think we need to sti stick to our process of, of you know, what, what's in front of us playing a week in, week out to, to the schedule that, that we have, you know. Um, obviously, I, we, we are concerned for us that the, the, main, the main thing is the health and, and safety of, of players and obviously everyone involved in the game. So, uh, whatever has to be, it has to be, you know, we leave that, those decisions to to the people that need to take those decisions, but um, and obviously we wish, uh, hopefully, everyone that is involved at the moment in in those sort of of problems, or that uh, we wish them well to to hopefully recover and and, and get back soon and, and so on. But um, yeah, we do we, we just we now we can focus only only the only thing we can do is focus on on uh, on the game. Uh, at the weekend on Friday against Connacht, and then, and then hopefully kicked on the European campaign. Yeah, and just finally on, on that, Felipe, would you be comfortable travelling to South Africa in the current climate? Well, I, I, I w if we have to travel, okay, if we have to travel, it will mean that there's this, like the people that will allow us to travel, they would have put the safety and, and health. The safety and health of, of us in, in front of anything, you know. So, um, if we are asked to to travel and 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 it's all cleared and so on, yeah, I have no problem on doing it. It's 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 just a, I think it's 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 such a delicate situation that no one will put on risk any any of us. So we we just focus on what we have to focus. That is a training and trying to get better every day. And, and the people that are in charge of making those decisions, I, I'm sure, and I have the full confidence that they will make the best decision in terms of, of again, healthy and safety of, of everyone, you know. Hi, Felipe. Hi, Felipe. How are you? Good. Um, Felipe, in terms of preparing a team for a big European match, if you were in Munster's shoes and you had to build up to a game without having any access to group training because we understand they have to self-isolate. Is that become a danger? I mean, do you think Leinster or whatever team should ask, would ask for a postponement in the event of not being able to collectively train before a big match? Look, I, I can't, you know, I, I, like, I can't put myself in there because I'm not in that situation and what would I do if they're all uh, suppositions, you know? All I can say is, you, you, you know, like definitely will assess, you always try to do the best you can in this current situation you are. And uh, if, if a monster asks for a postponement or not, I'm sure they, they have a reason why to do those things or not. So it's not for me to, to really judge or, or, or say if it's right or wrong, you know. Having said that, you, you, you have situations where um, I don't know. It comes to my head when the the only time that the Pumas beat the All Blacks, they were coming from a completely self isolation and this and blah. They couldn't train. There are some sometimes there are difficulties that or um, things that are not ideal that you can use them to to like kind of to get you more together. You know, just but. It's not a, it's not ideal that what the, the 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 preparation that monsters are going through, and I feel sorry for them. You know, it's not it's not ideal, definitely. But they, I'm sure that they will find a way to to, if they have to play the game in two weeks' time, to be ready for it. And and we all know monster how how well they they go under when when things are tough. You know, so yeah. Have you guys any extra precautions now? Because there's a little heightened sense of awareness over the last couple of days. Have you done any extra um, protocols or testing to, to make sure that it doesn't get into your camp? No, we, we, we are always aware of, of the... But we've been, since 
like that since I don't know like now it's 22 months more or less so we, we are always understanding the situation and, and we know we've been through tough moments like this one and, and some even worse moments in the past that uh, uh, COVID was out there and, and um, you know so definitely we don't want to get it in, in the camp and, and we are taking all the precautions that we can you know, but you control what you can control, and and it's, it's um, you know, it's it's not only we have a lot of people working in Leinster, and and it's and everyone has families, or most of them has have families, and and there's things that they are slightly out of your control. So you we do we try to do the best we can in terms of of what we can control, and and in fair in fairness, like. The players have been excellent in that uh, in in their behaviors, you know, the last 22 months, uh, in in how they kept or they made a huge effort to make sure to minimize all the risks of of uh, getting COVID in in our camp, you know. So, fair point to them and and to the staff and to everyone, you know, in in Leinster because uh, we've been working hard and we keep we'll keep doing the same. We don't relax, on, and even even when there was a bit more of a less or, or relaxation in, in in the country because it was it, there wasn't many cases, we still kept with the same behaviors, you know. Just the last one for me about uh, this coming Friday night. After seeing what Connacht were able to do in the rain on against the Ospreys, does that make you pray a little bit harder for dry weather? No, no, we we adapt. I think. You've seen what they've done in dry weather against Ulster. You you don't know what's better, <laughs> you know. I think they're an excellent team. You know, it's it's uh, Connacht is a team that they and um, they know what they how they want to play. Um, uh, well, they, they are a team that they play really good good rugby rugby brands and and they're well coached. Uh, they have good players, so um, we we understand the the challenge we are facing and. Look, they they've been very close uh, in the past, and the last time they've been in in the RDS, they beat us. So uh, they know, you know, they, they they know they can they will be fully confident on coming and, and getting a result here in at the RDS. So and and we know the challenge we are we are expecting. So yeah, and definitely coming back from a defeat were more than the defeat. It was. The performance that wasn't that great, so and we need to get better. So, um, yeah, we we are preparing, and that's all what we are focusing on. Thanks, Felipe. Cheers, uh, Felipe. It's Don here. Um, I, I heard a fan shout, "Wake up, Leinster!" after about twenty minutes against Ulster. How much of a, a wake up call was it, and how much was it down to a month without? <laughs> How much of a wake-up call and how much of what? And how much was it down to a month without having rugby? No, no, we don't want to put any excuses. Uh, Ulster has been a month without rugby too, and they were really good. You know, we don't we don't find those or we don't put that to an excuse. I think I think we weren't good enough um, uh, on the day and and to. To be fair, like it wasn't something of an attitude. I can see, I can, I could see the guys trying hard and so on, but uh, we weren't accurate um, in many phases of the of the of the game. And 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 I think Ulster were uh, the better team on the day, you know, and they well deserved the the, the victory. So uh, yeah, it's something definitely. It's a wake up call in terms of 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 everything for us, but but also it's. Um, it shows how competitive is this league is is going as well. You know, um, uh, there's teams that they anyone can beat anyone. You know, and 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 I think it's it's part of of the enjoyment and 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 the growth of the league as well. You know, so yeah, it's it's for us. It's a wake up call. More so, it's to you know put us into a a good position for us to review some things and and keep on kept keep on working in in some others and and um but yeah definitely it was a a, a good kick on the ass if you want to say okay thanks Felipe. hey felipe it's um, william here in galway uh, for galway bay fm 
Um, I'm just wondering how much attention you've played to the way Connacht have played this season. They have tried to change it up a bit, um, and it's certainly a faster style. So how do you think you're going to counteract that on uh, Friday evening? Yeah, but as I said, I think Connacht, they're a very, very good, exciting team to watch, you know. Um, uh, I know the coaches, they are, they are well coached. I, I, I like the way they, they've been coached. And, and it's not only this season. It, they, they've been growing in the last uh, few seasons. If there's something that you can say that they haven't been good at is maybe consistency and sometimes they play a brilliant game and then... But now they, they, they kind of see, look like if they have got that consistency more often than not. So they became a really, really good good team, you know. And and the way we are going to counter that is like trying to do our best, especially uh, understanding that if you give Connacht the ball and, and let them play, you'll be for a very, very tough evening, you know. So uh, we need to make sure that we, we defend and hard and, and, and we can get the, 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 the ball and be good, accurate in our set piece and, and, and our launch and, and then we'll start, a, start from there. But definitely it will be a, a tough game because they are, they are a good side, definitely. And just another quick one for me. There's a, there's a funny little st- statistical quirk. Since Robbie Henshaw joined Leinster, he's never played against his previous team, Connacht. And I know you're not going to tell me the team, but uh, it might be quite interesting to see him actually line up because there's 10 games have passed in that period of time. Yeah, it's good because he, he, it always comes to uh, some statistic that you haven't even had. A, I, I didn't even have a clue it was like that. Um, well, if, if, he's, if, if he's involved, I think it's a, it's a good challenge for him as well, you know. It, um, to play against his old club and, and so on, but um, yeah, we we are more focusing in the whole than than in just one or two players, you know. In terms of um, yeah, I'd say if he plays, it will be a, maybe an, even a special moment for him. But but we now have to focus in in what we can do and uh, and and concentrate on how we can beat Connacht, you know. Thanks, Felipe. Appreciate it. Cheers. Uh, hi Felipe, um, Harry Byrne, he hasn't really got much time this season, obviously he's just coming back and he was in with the Ireland camp and had a cameo there at the weekend just there. Uh, what, what do you make of the limited time he's had this season and uh, can we expect to see more of him over this 10-week ten, this ten block, a lot more of him? Like? Yeah, well, sometimes it's it's the way it is, you know, like uh, if he... If you have uh, some injuries, he's been very unlucky in terms of injuries, and he picked up some um, uh, strange injuries in the, in, you know, through through the. But but I think yeah, he's he's now fit, and and he's been in the Ireland camp for and, and for the for that for the last month, and now he's with us for last week and this week. So yeah, yeah hopefully he can have more games. You know, or more time, game time, um, but it's about him more than that. Is getting ready and feeding and and feed and and making sure that he's he's preparing himself for success. You know, so and that's what we are trying to do, trying to set set him up for for being successful. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully he can he can improve and take it the, the experience he's getting also in at international level or more at international training and it's always important to be in the, you know at, a, at an international camp because uh, you learn so much from such uh, good players so hopefully he can bring it uh, in, in, into Leinster and, and keep building his, his game you know and uh, just on the number 12 at the weekend Kieran Frawley who can seemingly play anywhere along that back line he had a he was probably the brightest spark at the weekend with his, you know, his line breaks, his runs. He was, he was very lively. Just, uh, just how do, you, how do you make of him? Well, sorry, what do, you, what do you make of him? You know, uh, just his, his growth over the past two years, and obviously become, being a de- development player for a week with Ireland in the last month. Just, do you think he's just on, on the right path? Yeah, definitely, he's on the right path. I think he's, he's seen it week in, week out, uh, training with us and. 
it's a great joy when he's been called for Ireland, you know, and and and, and again being even being involved in that in that month with training with all those uh, great players, it's in that setup, you know, it's it it can only do him better, you know, and and help him. So hopefully he yes he's developing well. I I think his 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 growth has been uh, huge in the last two years, and and he's still a lot more to go, you know, a, a long way to go. So yeah, I, I'm, he's enjoying his rugby, and that's the most important thing, you know. And hopefully he can he can play a lot for us, yeah, in the coming weeks.